Hi and welcome to the second part of this Blender 2.8 Mountains and Sunrise tutorial. So I thought it would be a good idea to actually animate this scene because I think it looks pretty good. So I thought we'd just do a basic animation using the camera and maybe move the light source and we'll see what we can create out of this. So I think the first thing we'll do is go to our output and set it to 30 frames a second and I reckon we want around 10 second animation. So let's set this to around 300. Let's set it down here to 300 frames and then let's go to our bloom and let's just change that bloom slightly it's a bit too strong so let's set it down a bit and the intensity we can bring that down a little bit as well i think that would be good you can click on the color here and give it a slight variation but i think we'll leave it on white and we'll have a little bit of bloom in this in this scene so let's go ahead and click on the record button and let's just work with the camera first so we'll click on the camera and let's go to its location rotation and uh, and we're going to press the letter i here and here so we insert keyframes for the location and rotation and let's go to frame 90 so that's about three seconds duration let's press i and i here and let's go back to the first frame and what we'll do is move our camera forward so let's um let's press shift and f so move to the viewport press shift and f and then roll your mouse wheel upwards so roll the mouse wheel upwards just two little touches and that will start to move the camera forward and then left click where you want to stop so now our camera will start to move backwards like this right it will move backwards and we want to rotate the camera as well so let's press r to rotate r to rotate and we're going to rotate it let's just double check we're going to rotate it on the y axis i believe r to rotate then y and let's rotate it around sort of this way something like this and now our camera will fly backwards on rotation that's kind of what we want like this and let's go to let's pause this let's go to this keyframe and the next thing we want to do is probably move the camera to the side a little bit so let's go to frame 160 and we've still got our record button let's press the letter i and i here and we're going to press g to grab the camera and move it to the side so we're going to move it to the side a little bit and now we want to turn it so it's facing more towards the light so let's press r to rotate and let's see we want to rotate on the z axis so r to rotate then z and we want to twist it around this way something like this so there's going to be a small amount of movement here like this and probably on that frame 160 uh, in fact yeah on frame 160 we want to drag the camera up a little bit so let's press g to grab and then z and just this right raise it up slightly to somewhere like around here so we just want a bit of movement going upwards rather than it being pretty static there okay so let's move all the way down to frame 300 you can't really see the frames here so use your mouse wheel to rotate outwards um, to zoom out on this timeline and we can go all the way down to frame 300 in fact we'll go to around frame 240 i think will be wise and we'll press the letter i here and i here and now we want to switch the camera and move it to the other side to the left side so let's press g to grab the camera and move it to the left side over here somewhere around sort of here quite far and then we want to rotate it this way so press r to rotate then z and let's just rotate it around this direction and then i want to move it up slightly so press g to grab then z and let's move it up slightly more so then we've got this sort of movement going on right something like this and then finally on 300 we want to try and get it back to the center again so let's press i here and i here and in fact what we might do is have the camera move forward i think would be wiser so let's press shift and f and let's move it forward to around here and we're going to press g to grab it and move it down slightly so we see some of these sort of rocks and stuff here and then we want to rotate it as well so on our first rotation let's just check we rotate it in this way so it would kind of be nice if we rotate out the other direction so let's press r to rotate then y and we're going to rotate out this way to somewhere like here and try and get that sunlight sort of in the middle somewhere so let's see so here we've got this sort of basic animation going on with the with the mountains here and then we want to animate this light source as well so let's go to the first frame in fact let's go to frame let's see frame 90 would be wise right so we'll go to frame 90 and we'll click on the sunshine this is our light source 
and we're going to press the letter I here and I hit and that will insert a keyframe and what we're going to do is um, left click on the land here so that will move us out the camera view so we can click back on the sunshine and as we move this timeline uh, let's see we want to move out so we have to middle mouse click here so go to frame 90 and middle mouse click that will take us out of the camera view right so as we move here um, the timeline the, the camera won't be moving or we, the, the, the viewport won't be moving so let's go to frame one and we'll press the letter I here and I here and we'll click on that sunlight and we want to just move it down a little bit so let's press G to grab then Z and let's just bring it down a little bit here and we want to now let's see the sunlight will come through like this right but on these first few frames let's say up to around one second right around one second we're going to press the letter I and the I here and we're going to insert keyframes here as well so I think on this first frame what we'll do is go to the light source and I want to set its value to zero I don't want any sort of light coming through then when it gets to frame 30 I want to set it back to 35,000 so it's going to quickly show light at the beginning right so it's going to be like this uh, let's see okay so we have to do that one more time <clears throat> we made a slight mistake there so what we'll do is on the first keyframe we have to actually hit this uh, button here animate property and then set it to zero and then go to frame 30 so we'll move to frame 30 and then click the animate button and set this to 35,000 otherwise it won't work it won't sort of light up like this that won't work okay I'm not convinced about this light coming down here so we can do two things I will can reduce the specular uh, let's see uh, on the material for the land so we click the land and go to its material uh, let's see we can probably I don't think there's much we can do about that I'm sure there's a way to stop that light shining there but I think it will be okay it's going to be pretty quick right it's going to be for like a second and maybe when we're looking at it from the camera view because we're not really seeing it from the camera so we should press zero and we can now see it from the camera view and we can kind of see what it's going to look like so I think that will be okay actually I think that will be fine um, so let's go back to frame 60 where it's quite flat this scene and let's uh, middle mouse click out so we can see by the viewport rather than the camera and we've got our light source showing like this and then we've got a decision to make right so let's click on our sunshine here and on frame 30 it's going to show the light and then on frame 90 maybe we'll change its color slightly so what we need to do is go to frame 30 first and click the animate button here and then go to frame 90 and click on the animate keyframe here click on the light source and you can change its color right so maybe we'll make it more of a red color and now you can see it will change from just like orange to a red shade and then let's go all the way down to frame 300 and between these frames I want to click on the animate light source again color let's click here and we're going to change it back to like a brighter yellow like a sunshine yellow so let's see so I think that's going to be okay and then on frame 300 let's press the letter zero that's what the camera sees right now so this is the last frame what the camera is going to see and we'll click on the sunshine and we'll press G to grab it and let's just move it down a little bit to around sort of this position where I think the light looks pretty good right so let's go to file save as and I'm going to save this as version 6 we last worked on version 5 so this will be version 6 and let's go back and click untick the record button and you kind of get an idea of what that sunlight's going to look like in your scene and it's moving slightly so I think it'll look pretty cool and let's just see those last frames because I'm not sure let's see what it looks like here yeah I think that'll be okay that's going to be our last frame that's what it's going to look like so let's go to the um, back to the first frame let's hit the record button 
let's go to the camera and in the camera settings here I want to turn on depth of field and I'm going to press the letter I here to insert a keyframe for this depth of field and then on frame 90 I'm going to press the letter I here as well and then I'm going to do that on frame 60 60 here press the letter I and let's go back to the first frame and let's set the depth of field to like 0 0.4 maybe a bit lower 0 0.2 it's going to be quite blurred out and then I think that's a and then on frame 60 I want to set it to around let's in fact we can probably set it to like 0 0.4 and you can see it's going to be like quite blurred out that's kind of the effect that we want, want it to be like blurred out and then it will sharpen between 60 and 90 and then when we get down to frame let's see on frame 90 we should press the letter I here to lock that keyframe then move all the way down to maybe frame 250 press the letter I here and then those values will be consistent from that duration then from frame 250 to frame 300 we'll press the letter I here and set it back to 0 0.2 so it will blur out at the end like this it's going to blur out right so I think we're good and then you can change the colors in here you can go and render this one out and you can make a different color scheme maybe do some crazy sci-fi purples and all sorts so let's try and render this out let's go to file save let's go to our output settings and in our output settings everything's pretty much set up one thing we should really do is go to our render settings and go to volumetrics and set it to tile size 4 you can set it to tile size 2 and that's going to give you much more detail but it will take a lot lot longer to render out so I'm going to leave it on tile size 4 and samples at 64 and this will render out a little bit quicker let's go to the render settings let's click on here and set it to AVI JPEG we'll click on the open folder go to my desktop click on here and we'll click accept and then press Control and F12 and this is going to take some time to render out so what I'll do is go and make a cup of tea and by the time I finish that tea hopefully we'll be able to see a video sequence so I'll pause the video for now okay so Blend is finished rendering out all of the 300 frames so let's close this down Let's go to File, Save, and let's minimize this. So on my desktop, I've got this folder, and inside this folder, we can see the video that is created. Let's open up that video, and let's check it out. Let's leave it on a loop, and then we can see how we might improve this. So overall, I think it came out pretty well. I do like the volumetric lighting, the way that the shadows are casted, it was a good idea to move that light source as well rather than having it in a static point um, but overall I think it came out pretty well I would have probably done more of a camera blur at the end and I would have created that blur to maybe make it last a little bit longer you see at the beginning it blurs out over a longer duration maybe you know around here you can start to see the blur removed uh, but at the end it blurs out only this small amount here so I reckon if we just started the blur around here and then blur to the end here it would have been a bit better and maybe blur to a, a more of a stronger value as well towards the end but overall I think it came out pretty well I quite like the idea of changing the colors as well in the light source as we play through this scene and I definitely like the sort of dark shadows casted off the volumetric lighting <clears throat> especially here you can see it here as well so you can get some really nice effects there using blender so i don't know what you think hopefully your one came out well maybe our camera sort of movement could have been a bit better but overall um just as a quick animation that we put together in blender i think it came out pretty well so let's close this down that's the end of this tutorial and i look forward to seeing you in the next dcp tutorial